He won't officially take control of the presidency until January of next year, when he'll stay in power until 2025. But there's no doubt, at least in the eyes of he and his supporters, that Nicolas Maduro is still in control of Venezuela. He was sworn in at the Constituent Assembly, a body set up and controlled by his government, where he made a rare admission that things are not going well. We must do things again, he said. We must do them better. But the president, according to the man himself, is not the problem. It's a stupid simplification to think this problem is due to Nicolas Maduro. It's a problem of the entire country, which has the right to live, to dream, and to a splendid future. Many Venezuelans cannot imagine that future, with inflation this year predicted to reach 13,000 percent, food and medicine shortages, more than three million people fleeing the country, and rampant crime and corruption. President Maduro urged Venezuelans to have faith in the country's oil industry. I want to hear from the oil workers because we must increase production to one million barrels. And who will do it? Maduro? Will Maduro do it? I'm asking the oil workers, will you or will you not help me increase oil production? Where are the oil workers? Maduro won the elections with more than 67 percent of the vote. However, most opposition candidates were either in jail, boycotted or were not allowed to run. They called the swearing-in ceremony unconstitutional. Many foreign governments also criticized the elections. And in the row that followed, Venezuela and the US have expelled diplomats from each other's capitals while several other countries in the region have recalled their ambassadors. President Maduro repeated his accusations that foreign governments led by the United States were undermining Venezuela's economy. He took office in 2013 on the death of his predecessor, Hugo Chavez. Despite the criticism, the protests and the misery, Nicolas Maduro is still the president of Venezuela, leaving many wondering just how he's done it. Daniel Schweimler, Al Jazeera, Buenos Aires.